Greetings, Poe fans. Welcome to another edition of Poe Unplugged. I am Carmen Bolden. And I am Jeannie Smith. And we are the Potastic Two. Two. Come Zoom with us into the Unbook Club dedicated to the works of Mr. Edgar Allan Poe. Greetings, Poe fans. We are ready for our discussion for Poe Unplugged about the pit and the pendulum. Jeannie, do you have any opening words or thoughts? No, I just like this story because it's all about history and torture. So two things I love. (laughs) This is very true. This is very true. And well, I know I have not read this story in ages. It's it's one that I think gets looked over for some reason. It Mm -hmm. it kind of gets left out. And yeah, the historical aspect of it is really cool. And so I actually um, just sat down, read it this afternoon, and while I was working on things, getting ready for the Telltale uh, Steampunk Festival, um, I watched the movie uh, with Vincent Price. And so um, I was like, just, I was like, let's just, let's pull it up this afternoon. (laughs) So thoughts from everybody. Anybody want to start? I would like to say that personally, my favorite scene in The Raven is where we get to see the pit and the pendulum and the victim. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite scene. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm terrible. Oh, no. No, not at all. <laughs> he not had it all. coming. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Back to the actual pit and the pendulum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And then let's see, hold on. I was looking at uh Micah posted let's see, love filming and kunk, uh history is torture. And Will responded, yeah, her deadpan is the end of me. I and I'm not as familiar with that. I'm sorry, there's a Del Toro version of this? Yes, and Micah just listed that. He said um, Del Toro's animated version is wonderful. How do I not know about this? I, d- I don't either. So I was going to say, Will and Micah, do y'all want to share more? I think a lot of the reason that some of this stuff isn't showing up because it's a little bit cultish in certain ways with certain okay. ones of the things. And unless you are a little bit um, cultish or fetishy or something like that. Mm-hmm. You may not look and see things. Uh, and I know the pit and the pendulum is so underrated for so many different reasons. And I think yes. the reason it's not brought up into teaching in school is because the time frame, because they usually try to match the English and the history with the time period each are studying and teaching yeah. and this one the historical aspects it's talking about with the spanish inquisition and everything doesn't match with any type of the actual histories that are being taught at the same time yeah that's true because i mean most of the main things that cross over with edgar Allan poe has the history that's being taught is usually u.s history not yeah the world histories that's true yeah time frame wise Jeannie, you're right and because the world history part of that would be taught like especially in tennessee would be seventh grade right and And the the opinion is way too above seventh grade i'm sorry yeah yeah, i I agree they would not get the vocabulary number one they would not get nuances that is in there with the history so mm-hmm. and thanks for sharing the youtube micah that yes was cool. yes thank you i was about to say that same thing Jeannie. and then will says pit in the pendulum is a oh here's lee let me let her in pit in the pendulum is a fantastic example of what the darkness can do to one's imagination what you can't see is more frightening than what you can see another thing that sticks out is that there's a happy ending um Let's see, hold on. It skipped on me. 
Um, he's saved by the LaSalle. I don't think of happy endings with Poe. That is very true. That is very well, true. On that aspect, was it truly a happy ending, though? Because the French were the enemies of the Spanish at the time due to, you know, due to the wars that they were going on. Because, you know, Spain, England, and France were always trying to kill each other. Uh, so you got the Spanish Inquisition that he's kind of getting away from because he's being saved by General LaSalle from the French. But now mm -hmm. he's in the clutches of the enemy. True. So what we have is the unknown, which what Will was talking about, that's the biggest thing most people are afraid of. Yeah. Is the unknown. And now he's just going from the known because he knew he was going to face his death with the pendulum. But now he's got a savior that he doesn't really care if he's going to uh <laughs> he doesn't really care if he's going to into the enemy clutches of the French who they're currently fighting with. He just knows he's escaped certain death. To now has hope again, which I think is part of the whole pit and the pendulum. It's all about hope and perseverance and not giving up mm -hmm. because that's the thing. He comes up with the idea of using the rats that are waiting for his demise so they can have dinner. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> <the same>. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're like waiting for their buffet because they're in a line, you know, they're like, woohoo, we even got some, you know, spices out here. But, but at the same time, he uses the, sorry, I can't help it, he uses that to his advantage because he does not lose hope. Even though there's nothing but darkness, there's nothing but, you know, that fear, that you know, just heaviness of knowing that if I don't do something, then there's nothing going to be left to do. It's over. Yeah. So yeah. Darkness and nothing more. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I'm crossing over. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Jenny, I, I do agree. And um, a lot of things kind of resonated with me when I was reading it at the very beginning. Uh, and I've got like, I don't know if y'all can sit well, I'll show you. I have po post-it notes. <laughs> that I made, had made um but one of the lines at the this is like the very first page of my book um the blackness of darkness supervened. No. all sensations appeared swallowed up in a mad russian descent as of the soul into hades and that so reminded me of dante's inferno just all the levels of hell because that there's so many um, allusions to that throughout the whole story, it, you know, because he he wasn't sure, you know, where he was with all that darkness. But it also brings into the point of what you're saying with the levels of hell, with the nine rings of Dante's hell. Mm -hmm. He was literally thinking he was going forward and going in a certain direction, but when he finds out, he literally is walking in circles and going yeah. to the lowest point, knowing that that lowest point was where he landed on that flat surface with that pendulum coming for him and it was slowly being lowered to each you know each time in his level of hell yeah but there's such the religious in this that i was like oh poe is really breaking out the religion in this with the numbers with the the different aspects of death uh the unknown the levels of you know our own mortality type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, said, I was actually. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeannie. I was actually listening to this again last night. I thought of you. I was wondering if you were going to do something with like the seven candles, like with a yeah. religious aspect with the seven candles. The seven. Yeah. I was thinking seven deadly sins. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good time, that Molly. Kind of like you. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, see, see, she's getting me. So yeah, the well, more I know, I Jeannie's gonna have a religious thing because, like, I mean, I know he it does like allude to religion. I was thinking, I was wondering what Jeannie like had, uh, because like I'm not very versed in the Bible, I'm, like, just gonna throw that out there, you know what I mean? Even though I went to a Catholic high school, <laughs> but like, I'm not very, uh, I don't know a lot, so I'm always interesting for her time there. Yeah, well, I have to say that. I wasn't raised Catholic. I was raised Southern Baptist. So you can you can impart into that what you would like, you know, because that's why my life was surrounded by a lot of the 
the religious connotations, but mm-hmm. that's okay. But not only with this, but there was one thing that struck me when he was talking about the steps because the steps added up to a hundred and then he added the other paces to it. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that popped in my head was like, huh, I wonder if he's alluding to the hundred years war. Oh, that's that actually lasted 118 years, by the way. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Did. That's yeah. a really interesting thing. I had not ever thought about that. Yeah. I mean, because I don't, I just like jumped into the history aspect as I was rereading because I'm like you, Carmen. It's been a long time since I've read this one. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I don't know why. I think it's because some of the other ones are some of my, I guess, better favorites. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm also trying to read all of his works because I have not, I have, I can say, I honestly, I have not read everything and I'm working on that and I'm slowly doing it. So I really grasp the full meaning behind what he wrote and digging in and doing some research, you know, when I do read different ones, um but yeah and this is one again i i should have i should read more often um and that, another thing that to me poe does very well in in many of his stories um let me see where did i mark it when uh he says uh let's see very suddenly there came back to my soul motion and sound the tumultuous motion of the heart and in my ears the sound of its beating and to me, it's that hypersensitivity with the senses that Poe brings in so many of his stories. And to me, it brings out that huge aspect of imagery with all the, you know, all the five senses. And so again, Poe, Poe done it again. <laughs> he just, it, it just, the writing is beautiful with bringing that imagery in. You know what's weird about this one for me? I'm probably getting some hate from this one, but this is one of my least favorite Edgar Allan Poe stories mm-hmm. and, until recently. Let me explain what I mean. Like, I read it, and I'm like, okay. And I don't know if anybody went to the Baltimore International Poe thing last year and saw mm-hmm. Stephen Smith perform a Tales Hall, uh, not a Tales Hall Heart, perform this as one of his things. Um, and he actually, because he was saying it's like a story that's actually, because, you know, his parents being actors, and he had a great speaking voice. It's one of those, it was almost meant to be performed. And he, like, actually performed this. And mm-hmm. I actually saw it in a whole new light. I mean, he was just seriously there. And he, like, had a chair where he was like, pretending to be, like, strapped to the chair. And the whole scene with, the, like, the rats and everything. Mm-hmm. And it really opened my eyes from a story that I was kind of just, like, am about. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still like it, but in comparison to other things. And I was like, wow, when you actually saw him act it out and think of it in terms of that, it just made it so much more powerful. And like now it's like, I mean, it gave you chills. I mean, he was like, he's a great actor. He's like sweating and everything as he's doing it. I tried to find him a YouTube channel, but unfortunately he only had, he doesn't have the full thing on there. So I was going to try to share that with you guys, but really. I have guys. snippets. Yeah. I have, have seen chunks of it. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. powerful. It was really like, it gave me chills. Yeah. yeah really I was going to say, he was really and I was like, thinking, like, wow, like, you know what I mean? The story I was just lukewarm about. And now I'm like, wow, I just see it. And I tried to listen to an audio thing of it last night. And I just kept seeing Stephen's voice and my hearing Stephen's voice in my head. I'm like, oh, he's not Stephen. He's ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> everybody can see him do it again. I, I hope I hope so because you know I was there but I didn't get to see his um performance of it I, I definitely want to see that that's amazing yeah. what's his name again his name is Stephen Smith but it's spelled with a P um he is a British actor he, he has the black cat you can actually see the whole thing in the black cat on his um YouTube channel um but yeah, he, yeah, that's that's how you pronounce it. Or spell it, crap. Yeah, sorry, I'm reading it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, really, I mean, he's called the one man Poe. So he actually goes around and he performs several Poe acts as the one man Poe. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I hope he does uh come back. Um yeah, and I was gonna say we'll also add it so it might be productive to read the story a couple more times with different aspects in mind, historical, religious, etc. And um yeah, I agree because I, I think every time I read one of Poe's stories, 
again, like over and over, because there are several that I love to just read. Um, I try to look for something different, a different lens or, you know, that kind of thing. And um, so, yeah, I totally, I, I would do that, Will. I think that's a very good suggestion. And well, some performances. And yeah, and going along with what Holly was saying about the performance, this one has always been, in my opinion, the best and only one that needed the performance in order to make a more impact for a reader of this story. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason for me is like we were talking about how it doesn't coincide with when we're teaching it to a lot of what's going on in the, the English aspects. So it, it does have a very high level of language. It does have a high level of literary terminology and, uh, you know, figurative languages along with literal languages so it is a very difficult read unless you reread it several several times and yeah. like we're talking about there's always a interpretation from different points of view like different backgrounds different people that you know male female you know religious uh parts of the world that type of thing Mm -hmm. that can change the reading and change the interpretation of this story. And I always think of Edgar as being, wow, he really was into that stride when he did this story because he was, he was hammering home a lot of aspects. Because, you know, most of the times we had the murder of the room work, which was taking place in a French area. But this was his first depth, and I think it's really cool that he was showing the bad side of Spain, but then was portraying France as the victor, as the uh, savior. So he yes. had a love of Spain for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he also kind of, like, you don't find out that, you know, this was the time of the Spanish Inquisition, and I have to just throw this in, out there that it makes me think of Monty Python because my husband will bring that joke up multiple times. Anyway, sorry, just a little humor there. But yeah, it's like Poe doesn't reveal that. It's like, you know, he's done something. And then it's like, okay, this is the, the times of the Spanish Inquisition. And he says he, this the character, the narrator, who we know is not reliable because he's, you know, in a hallucinant, hallucinogenic state at one point after he you know drinks that water and all that kind of stuff but you know, he, he admits he's sinned but we don't know you know is it just because he is not catholic or is it something else you know any thoughts on that I mean, you kind of assume that's why he's put in this, the pit and the pendulum, you know, with, or with the, mm -hmm. this area, this dungeon, I should say. Well, that's the thing. With the Spanish Inquisition, it definitely had its own religious connotation mm -hmm. that you were going to suffer because of your religion. Right. But at the same time. But they, they killed people for other things, too. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could have been anything. And he never really, you know, says outright what it was or what it could have been. You just because, assume. Yeah, you just had to actually interpret. And in your own aspect, think of putting yourself in his position. What do you? What would you have done to rate such a torturous ending in mm -hmm. life? Mm -hmm. And... Well, one of the things that always struck me was the loneliness. It's not yeah. just the unknown, but he knew that there were there was somebody watching him. Mm -hmm. He didn't know it. He couldn't see it. He just, you know, he was in a darkness. He was, you know, cut off from everything. He was facing his own torment. The but food would show always, up. The, yeah. You know, yeah. And somebody was always giving him food and water, but what was the... Was it a good thing or was it a bad thing? Because he would always fall asleep right after he had the food and water. So yeah, and then that's, that's when he ended like up the on the table. table. Yeah, because yeah. I always think of the Stockholm syndrome too. Mm -hmm. you know, this is another aspect of the torture. 
That's you know, a very good point too. Yeah, I guess like what I was thinking about what Jeannie was saying before about like, or like Carmen, like what did he do to get there? I guess I kind of always looked at the story as kind of like maybe like his background post outlook on war in general about mm-hmm. almost like it's silliness. Like you're basically in prison, whether it's religion or for whatever reason, you're on the wrong side, you're in prison. But then the next day you're liberated and you're a good guy. So to me, I kind of always thought of it as a story of, you know, um, just unfortunate circumstances and just kind of like that silliness. Like, you know, you're the bad guy, you're the good guy. You know what I mean? Kind of that back and forth from being the victim to being liberated. Because mm-hmm. I guess I was kind of like what Will said. I always kind of thought at the end that he was saved. I never actually thought of it maybe. But now I am kind of thinking like, well, maybe saved to what? Uh, but yeah. I kind of always saw it as kind of that flip flop, not necessarily what he got to get in there, just kind of how, you know, because he in the beginning it said like he, other people were sentenced to death, and kind of like he kind of just got caught, yeah, wrong place, wrong time. But mm-hmm. it would happen to any of us in a situation like that. Yeah, um, and Mike added, I had always imagined he left the toilet seat up or something. So <laughs> some right. humor in here. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, I'm, oh dear. Oh, oh, uh, we have somebody who's joining hi, us. It's po. Say hi, Po. Hi, Po. Oh, pretty. He might say hi, but he wanted to come up and hug. Oh, so cute. Thank you. All right, he's he's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i have had my moment i'm done yes oh earlier he had come up by my leg i was gonna grab him but he he like mewed at me and then went on uh let's see oh uh and mike said hello po and then uh will says my elsa is in the room with me and i'll try and show her off too she'll love me oh awesome yes we love to see the cats <laughs> or the dogs you know but um i think most people have the cats <laughs> But I have two actually. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Right, right, right. <laughs> I just tried to have two. Okay. Lily, you said okay. you have two? Yeah, yes. Oh. Put them my feet. Oh, cute, cute. Very oh. cute. Yeah, mom was giving you guys the butt earlier. So, <laughs> so this, um, is, this is the baby cat, just so you can see him. He's been trying to get me to pick him up. So oh, he won't stay. Oh. This is Gabriel. Gabriel. Oh, oh, hi, oh, Gabriel. <laughs> I said, Virginia, I think we got to see all of yours tonight. <laughs> Miracle of miracles. I yeah, had this, this. There was a moment where I don't know what happened, but Elliot was being chased by Lucian and they came tearing through the living room and almost knocked my tripod over. And I'm like, oh, oh God. So that's what all that was. And I had to snatch up Elliot. He is now, of course, in my lap. Her, actually, you might be able to hear him purring. He's very loud. That's um, too funny. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh my god, you guys. Oh. Um, <sighs> I was looking so at one of the best things that I wanted to bring in about the pits and the pendulum that mm-hmm. Ed probably did was he never actually gave a name to this character. No, he does. He and he, does, he, he, and he does, does, does what he is kind of famous for is the unnamed narrator. The unnamed. I'd, I'd like, like to raise a glass to a, yet another unnamed narrator. Yes. <laughs> yes. But here's the thing. Narrator's I think he did it purposely, in this opinion, in my opinion, on this one, because this could be any of his characters from his other works that needed to be punished for something. Mm-hmm. Think of the black mm-hmm. cat, the guy yeah. from the black cat. You know, think of the cask of Amontillado. That could be either the one that got walled up or the one that walled the dude up. So it fits with any of his characters that they're having to face the consequences of their own actions. And Toto Hart, Toto Hart is the narrator for the whole thing because you really it takes a while to put it into perspective that when it's taking place and what's happening as a historical aspect. So it could be any one of those characters facing their own actions from the books Mm -hmm. or from the stories. Yeah, and one of the things that I thought was very interesting while he was on the table and, you know, the pendulum was swinging and he realizes it's, you know, coming down towards him, he focuses on his garment where is it going to cut the garment, not himself, 
And so I thought that was really interesting. And it's like in his kind of days confused state, his, you know, fear of what was going to happen. Did he focus on that? Like, because he was trying to distract himself from the reality of what was about to happen. You know, I just, I thought that was kind of genius how Poe did that. And it's like, you know, hopefully none of us will be on a table with a pendulum swinging down upon us. But, you know, you don't know how you're going to react if, until you're in that situation. Yeah. And unless it's Rufus Griswold. That what now, Virginia? I said, unless it's Rufus Griswold. And, and it can That's swing, true. Maybe it can That's swing. True. That's true. Yes. And Michael says, unless you're into that kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh. Yeah, Jeannie, I, which, which kitty was that? Freebird. Okay. Hi, Freebird. Yeah, she was making herself known by laying on me, so, you know. All right. But, yeah, I just, I wanted to bring that up because that was something else that, you know, um, it was like, it, it wasn't distracting in the reading at all. It was just kind of interesting. And, again, I have not read this in years, and I'm really glad we decided to discuss this story. And then when I started watching um, the Vincent Price movie, I started thinking about things because I used to watch um, horror movies, especially like the Universal Monster type movies with my dad growing up. He introduced them to me, and I would get scared in the middle of the night after watching them, saying I'd be eating popcorn with him, and, you know, I'd be, you know, Mom, Dad! in the middle of the night because I'd be dreaming of horrific things but then my brother one of my brothers and I also used to watch like Christopher Lee Dracula movies after school some days and also I remember I'm pretty sure watching this with my brother so I'm gonna actually send him a message and say do you remember us watching this together and it kind of just brought some nostalgia to me and it was just kind of like I think I I I don't, you know, the first type of thing that I read from Poe was The Raven, Merge in the Rue Morgue, but I think further back, I think I saw some of these Vincent Price movies, you know, before I realized I did, and that brought that memory back to me, and I'm like, wow, I've been seeing Poe a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a cool memory. Hey, I have another religious aspect. You want me to throw it out there for you? Or you yes, wanna, yes. Want to jump in to see what I'm going to say? Because let me, let me, let me just throw this to you. When you were talking about his outfit, the shroud of his outfit, mm -hmm. him being covered by it, and then all of a sudden him rising from it because it was thrown away. It was eaten away by the rats, and he was resurrected. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, I never even thought about that. Yes. Yeah, because oh, the oh. aspect of his outfit, which, by the way, I think is really strange. Who actually dressed him? Because that's just creepy on another level. You know, we, we're, we're having some BDSM torture chamber things going on here. Um, but... <laughs> think about it he wakes up yes a creepy easter very good i'm glad i did it all right oh yeah and well and oh. will, will says when he laughs in house alternatively one thought i had was that whoever was monitoring him would want to slow the torture down because he no doubt not want our unknown narrator to enjoy the torture just a thought absolutely yes <laughs> no but i was actually thinking about that when i was thinking about him being in a shroud lying on a slab him facing his own mortality and darkness and then he manages to uh erect himself after you know after lose not losing hope and all that so i was like yeah that could be strong in there too because he's raised out of the the pit yeah. and into a savior aspect because of the french general saving him from his fate yeah so yeah just wanted to throw that out there too. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any other thoughts on what you kind of picked up on in your reading or watching Vincent Price? <laughs> no, everybody does love Vincent Price. Just watching him, period. Oh, I know. 
I have not seen that one, but it's funny. It's, it popped up yesterday, and it was too late to watch it before this, but I did see the one with Bela Lugosi where he had the torture chamber in his, like, basement. He's, like, a doctor. I think, is that called the Raven? What is that called the Raven? I don't know. Is that the Raven? I'm not sure what that one's called. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's the um, yeah. morgue. Yeah. Because Bella Lugosi had the, uh, where he would strap the woman in the thing in the basement. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, because I told him he also did the one with the room morgue where he was, like, injecting, like, the gorilla. Yeah. Into the girl, yeah, that was so. a lot of things that they would probably yeah. use the same set for, but yeah. 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 And uh, <laughs> Micah all also said, I want to thank Edgar Allan Poe for inventing the world's first escape room. I had not thought about that. That is an excellent <laughs> point. There is another uh, um, a tribute to uh, Mr. Poe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I always thought that was a genius with the rats. I mean, I did like yes. that. Like, how, like, the human like, ingenuity to, like, think of something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was pretty, pretty dang clever. <laughs> oh, I know. And I think I'd love to do that one. I, I always go, whenever I think of rats, especially this time frame, I always go back to, you know, the Black Death and, you know, fleas on rats and all that kind of morbid mm -hmm. stuff. Um, let's see. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Will also said, I watched Mask of the Red Death and y'all's recommendation. I thought it was quite disturbing for a film of that time. Um, more so than other Roger Corman Vincent Price films, more so than other, yeah, yeah. It it, it had elements in there, uh, the Mask of the Red Death, definitely of um, things that like, what would the rating have like? The rating now would be very different than what it was back then. I think. Oh yes, no the the rating systems uh, far stricter. <laughs> far, far stricter. Okay, this is Mitt. <laughs> he is uh, boy. <laughs> he is um, yeah. our diabolical evil genius, and I'm surprised he's not being more upset than, there we go. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to grab him since it's Respect Your Cat Day, so. <laughs> well, so. All right, any other thoughts that you guys picked up on? And I think... I guess I just always thought... Oh, I'm sorry, Carmen. No, 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 you go ahead, you go ahead. You know, I guess I always just thought it was interesting about how... I, I, I think it was Gene who brought this up earlier, about how they're, like, watching him, how they had, like, these group of these elect men mm -hmm. uh, just kind mm -hmm. of, like... Uh, and then kind of the image where I forgot the words you used to describe it, how like he, they were there and they kind of seemed to disappear almost ghost like. I'm totally like paraphrasing, obviously, it was word way nicer than that. But uh, yeah, I guess I, I think that's like a kind of the weird aspect of not only is he in a torture chamber, but someone's getting their jollies by like actually watching it. Like, uh, yes. like, like Michael was saying with like the, the uh, escape room, it's kind of like that version of like a soul type thing. Or someone's like really like enjoying because I mean at the end of the day, I mean executions are executions, you just kill them. Like and back to I think the point you guys were saying earlier, like, well, why is this man just not hung and he's tortured? And why right. are they watching him? And then and yeah. <clears throat> just kind of a weird scenario, I guess. Yeah. That Let's see, and then, let's see, Mike says, I love the Dante's hell comparison. Thank you for that. You're welcome. As you say, a new perspective each time. Yeah, and I, I think if I read this in a month, six months, a couple years, whatever, I'll probably pick up on something else different. Um, one thing, I, when I was um, looking up the movie this afternoon to put on while I was working on uh, our things, um, it came that was you know Vincent Price's came up first and then right after listed was the version from I just looked it up on my phone in 1991 and what's interesting it says it's a horror film and I have not seen this version has anybody seen the 1991 version who's in it uh let me see hold on I can tell you uh let's see actually it's billed as horror romance <laughs> 
Um, Ooh, that sounds sexy. With what? The rat? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the same with the rat? Yeah, so Lance Henriksen, uh, somebody named Stephen Lee, William Norris, Mark Margolis, uh, let's see, Carolyn Purdy Gordon, Barbara oh. Bocci, Benito Stefanelli, Jeffrey Combs. And then, I mean, there's, there's other people too, but I mean, there's, wow, there's actually cool. quite a few people in here. Yeah, but the I think I it says, so you know, huge in horror. But I know I have not seen this particular version, but the um, synopsis says horror film set in 1492, Toledo, Spain, depicting the cruel deeds of a monk named Tor- Torquemada. Torquemada, Grand Inquisitor of the Spanish Inquisition, and Lance Henriksen plays that role. So huh. that would be an interesting version to check out. Yeah, because yeah. Jeffrey Combs has played Ground Poe multiple times. Yes, he? Like in like yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Micah put the link on IMDb in the chat. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Micah. Yeah, that's interesting because I I have like I created a, a Google Keep with all of the Poe movies, like everything, like I copied it from the internet, um, Googling like Poe movies, and it's a huge list. And some are like kind of shorts, some are documentaries and things like that. Um, and I, I kind of like cross them off the list as I watch them, but. Um, I, I think I remember seeing that on the list, but again, not thinking about the pit and the pendulum that often. Today, I really, I saw that. And I'm like, I'm going to have to go back and watch this one. My thing is with some of the movies, when they have to deal with books or poems or anything like that, mm-hmm. I am not very um, into watching movies that have been recreated from books because they always seem to get something wrong that pisses me off yeah and i just don't want to watch it uh, because i spend more time critiquing how badly they did rather than paying attention to who's ever playing it or their own aspects yeah now i'm not saying all of them are that way but there have been some horrific re you know reproductions yeah no yeah um will said and i think this is a really good point he said it just occurred to me that the main character may have been jewish or muslim he talks about seeing their lips move and a quote i saw them fashion the syllables of my name that is a very very good point yeah and that would make sense because, I mean, the Spanish Inquisition, if you weren't Catholic, you were a heretic. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and also the other thing that a lot of people forget, the Spanish Inquisition was responsible for more people dying that were accused of being witches than the Salem witch trials. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's a ama- it's like, I think, hundreds, thousands of people died from um being accused of being a witch i mean it was they lumped everything into you're a heretic yeah because they had the moors and they were also so yes. they were they were also considered the equivalent of a witch is just mm-hmm. the moor group in, a, in itself yeah but you know mm-hmm. if you weren't catholic or if you weren't christian or well, even some christian faith faith you know like mm-hmm. the protestants we'll just we'll just love them either you're in the catholic or you're a protestant because anything not catholic is a protestant right oh um, so if you weren't a catholic then you got screwed over many times you got killed you got tortured you got because you were a heretic you were either a witch a demon you know mm-hmm. had to die yeah um, but yeah, Poe really, I think Jeannie mentioned this before, um, about, well, I brought up the imagery, but Jeannie mentioned it before. This is, I have never seen this as part of a curriculum for any grade level to teach in school. And I think a lot of it does have to do with the figurative language because there's, you know, also symbolism. Um, he personifies the pendulum when, um, he's talking about it, um, and kids, especially nowadays, like that, that's one of the things we're about to get ready for our, our state test. And that's one of the things my kids are struggling with is they don't get that abstract concepts of figurative language. 
this one is so heavy in it. I think a lot of students, especially not having that historical background, plus the abstract thinking, would struggle with this story um, until they're older. I really think that. Definitely. All right. Any other thoughts? It's okay if, if you don't. <laughs> well, I, I a lot of insight. Sorry, a lot of insight yeah. into the story. So thank you. I learned a lot about it. Yeah, thank you, Layla, for joining. And and we we kind of just did a few little introduction kind of things at the beginning, so you didn't really miss a whole lot. So I'm glad you got to join. Oh, that's good. Yeah, good. Um, well, and uh, Jeannie and I um will have you know Po Unplugged um in April. I'm looking up the date. It's usually the last Tuesday of the month. I could um okay, so it's going to be April 25th. And we decided on the gold bug for next month. And so really looking forward to that. And we're, we're trying to, um, uh, we're trying to bring on a guest and I'm, I'm having trouble um, getting in touch with these people. And so I'm, I'm just going to keep trying. I'm probably gonna have to make a phone call and see if we can connect because it'll be a neat little thing. So but um yeah and I, and the gold bug is one it's a little bit longer than his normal stories but it's so good and if you ever get a chance to go to Sullivan's Island right outside of Charleston it is amazing and the little the po connections within um where on Sullivan's Island it's just it's really cool there's even street names after Poe like there's a Poe street or avenue I can't remember um my husband took pictures of me at all the places in one of my Poe dresses mm -hmm. um we went to the the tree where um there's a couple different ones that people think this is the actual tree that he wrote about and so um but if you ever get a chance to go it's 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 beautiful it's really neat and filled with Poe things and let's see, Micah says, um, this was great. Do you have the details for the next meeting? Thank you again for doing this. Oh, you read my mind. And then finally, someone who reads a magician's mind. <laughs> That's funny. And then Will says, I hope there's a Nevermore High School. Oh, that would be very cool. <laughs> that would be awesome. I think we should start. It has a nice ring to it. It does. It does. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jeannie, we should just start a school. That's what we should do. Yeah. And I can, you know, not have any students if I want to. That's the great thing about it. Hey, you, you're not allowed to come. No. I can refuse entry. You're not allowed. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I don't think, I don't know. That might be scary if we did that and, tied to oh, yeah. Poe and um because I, I have this feeling you might want to take the stories too literally if they, they have consequences <laughs> oh my gosh that would be after school detention yes okay. yes exactly after school detention then i could think of you know we could have the black cat you know and then that way that would be um suspension the, the cast of amontillado would be you know lunch detention i'm just saying yes oh, oh okay yeah Oh, well, if you are, I know um, Virginia will definitely be at the Telltale Steampunk Festival this weekend. And Holly, you said you're coming. We'll be there Saturday. So we're going to be all unboxing. I saw oh, you on the right. schedule, Virginia. And then yeah, you're going yeah, to yeah. vendor at Carmen. So you yes. and me. Yeah, we'll be there. So if if you you are in the area or know uh, anybody up in that area, tell them to come out to it. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of neat activities to do, um, not just you know the vendors to come visit us, but um, yeah. So it's I think it's going to be awesome. So we are ready. 
All right. Well, I think I think we have I think talked through the pit and the pendulum. And um, if any, unless anybody else has any final thoughts, a good trip oh, and a good time. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah, we, we actually just made a decision to uh, start driving tomorrow evening and drive part of the way. And I think we will not be as tired once we get there because we're, we're going to take a little detour into Delaware first and uh, drive over to right across the border to New Jersey because Jeannie doesn't have that as a state and then drive down into Baltimore on Friday. So... Jersey strong. Come on. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I've flown over it several times. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have at Walt Whitman's grave. I've been to Walt Whitman's grave. So you know sad? I actually have not. So that's ah, horrible. But it's, it's a Holly, you need to go if you have a chance because it is a beautiful cemetery and his grave, it's it's just it's it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. Okay, okay. Cemetery is it in? Oh, if you hadn't asked. Uh, it's that, it's, it's, it's that real famous one. I've actually been to it, but I don't think I've actually, the one where all the celebrities are buried. Uh, let me I can't see. I not what it's called. I get emails from them because I sign for their thing. Let's but I've never see. actually been to a grave. Layla, did you <laughs> say the name of it? I heard no. Layla say something. Oh, okay. uh, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, don't, don't it's, 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 Okay, it's Camden, New Jersey, Harley Cemetery. I just couldn't remember the okay, name. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking of a different one. I'm thinking of one in Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wilson, yeah. Westminster Presbyterian. So. Okay, okay. So I just, yeah, I quickly looked it up. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for tonight. I think this was a great discussion. And I, I think it sounds like that many of us really did revisit this story Um from years past and so that's really kind of cool so all right well we thank everybody and we hope to see everybody back in april on the 25th for the gold bug thank you thank oh, you, you. Yeah. Y'all have a wonderful night bye y'all right. bye, bye. Good evening. holly see you soon <laughs> yes i say is jeff going with you or are you guys doing a girl's trip it, just a girl's trip, so. Uh-oh, that's yeah. trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All righty then. I will see, see you guys soon. All right. Thank you. Right. Bye. Right, bye, guys. Bye. All right. Let me, a sec. It's going to, can you just, no, no, no. I'm trying to hit the. Trying to find our stop recording button.